Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, this is Arthur E. Staff Gymnasium here on the campus of Brockton High School where today, what has become a very good rivalry over the years, it's the Abington Green Wave and the Brockton Boxers. Abington lost their star player, number 15, Jenny Warden, the 1,000-point scorer. She graduated. Brockton is coming off back-to-back -back losses in the Olive Rames Holiday Tournament. They've got a B under their bonnet tonight. And as always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. Miles, last year this matchup was a very good one. It turned into a classic Brockton upset the Abington Green Wave that were ranked like 12th in the state at the time. And Brockton was able to keep their star in check and get the big win. And this really has become one of the better rivalries in Massachusetts girls basketball. Yes, it has. And um, Abington's here to, to uh, beat Brockton like they did last year. But Brockton, I believe, has come in here with a good attitude, and like you said, they had two losses in a row in the Christmas tournament, but uh, the holiday tournament, but I'm sure the coach has um, emphasized on forgetting about the holiday tournament. Let's, let's focus on this uh, season that's really gonna get tough over the next few weeks. The last game here at Staff Gymnasium, the JV game between these two teams went to double overtime as Annalicia Fernandez is called for a travel. Yeah. 35-32, the final score in that JV game. The Abington ladies, they got their hands on, a, on the ball when Alicia went up. And she was still holding on to the ball, so that was definitely a travel. Still scoreless a minute and 15 seconds into the first quarter. If you are watching this, you're probably buried under about a foot and a half of snow. Grab some hot chocolate, watch some Lady Boxers basketball. Don't forget to dig out a spot for your pets to go outside. Elizabeth Williams had the open three, drives inside, finger roll is good. Yeah, nice job driving to the basket, Elizabeth Williams. This is number four, Marissa Golden, off to Mo Stanton. And it looks like the Lady Boxers are playing a 2-1-2 zone. Stanton so far, early in this ball game, they're doing a good job with Abington as far as uh, Abington having to um, work for their shot. And that's what the Lady Boxers have to do all game. A three is good for number 35, Christiana Remillard. Yeah, Remillard, she can hit that outside shot. Fernandez out to Jayla Smith. Smith, pretty much the definition of a small forward. For a three, it's gonna be well short. Lonnie Montero able to keep it in bounds and someone's fouled. It's going to go against Abington. Yeah, yeah, because I was going to say Maddie O'Connell. She, she was pretty aggressive using her body going after that basketball. So. First foul in this game, it is three to two. Abington on top, and Alicia Fernandez, Jayla Smith, two on one up court. Wow. Fernandez, we saw that phenomenal spin movement play the last couple of games. Yeah, she just couldn't quite finish it. There's nice a block, block for Elizabeth Williams. Ooh, where's the foul? Fernandez going down hard on the floor. Wow, she, she caught an arm across the face and there was no foul on the play. Tough break for uh, Fernandez. This three off the back of the rim, no good. Offensive board and fouled on her way up is Caitlin Diver. Coach, all the way 
way down to the X. Let's go to the X on the cover. Coming into the game, Courtney McCabe. She replaces Lauren Kelleher. Four to two, your score, Abington on top of the boxers. Four and a half left in the first quarter. Elizabeth Williams to Fernandez, back to Williams. Now over to Jade Went. Went to Jayla Smith. Went back to Smith, back to Williams. Good ball movement for the boxers. Fernandez finds a lane. Neilani Montero for three, no good off the front of the rim. And short a rebound for Matty O'Connell. Yeah, nice ball movement by the Lady Boxers. All I saw was ball. I think they're gonna call Williams on. called for a hold. Who was that? That was Elizabeth Williams. Williams on the, on the foul. The Jeez. air quotes foul. Good on her first attempt is Mo Stanton. One of the better basketball names we've seen here at Staff Gymnasium, Mo Stanton. Went coming down with the rebound. Exactly halfway through the first quarter, Elizabeth Williams for the boxers to Jayla Smith. Over to Montero, now in for Went. Went from the charity stripe out to Elizabeth Williams. Montero back to Williams, 10 on the shot clock. Williams working away inside, too much mustard on it for Jade Wint. Yeah, I like how Williams went to the went right to the hole, used her athletic, athletic ability to wiggle in there. And unfortunately the pass had a little bit too much mustard on it. But uh, that's what they're gonna need from some of these players like Williams to drive to that basket, you can't have any fear. Williams to Montero, Montero fouled. Their shot did not fall. Neilani Montero at the charity stripe. Couple of shots. No good on her first. Gavington going with Heavy blockers, number 25 into the game. That is Kaylin Mahoney. And O'Connell back in the game. Jayla Smith coming up with the ball, but a travel called against Kelleher. Yeah, that was tough defense by Jade Went. On the Abington player, forced her to to travel. Our lady Box has got to stop putting some baskets. Rockton centering their sending in their free throw uh, three throw shooters. That is Josoma Montrand and Annalie Lorenzo. Yeah, Montrand's got to do a better job when she gets that pass. She can't give up on the on the play. Thought she'd lost it for good, but it was really there for her to take, but she wasn't watching where she was stepping. Stepped on the uh, out of bounds line. A turnover committed by Abington. Marissa Golden getting ready to come back into the game for the Green Wave. One of the more fearsome high school mascots in Massachusetts basketball. Montron three, no good. It hit the rope supporting the there. basket. Yeah. Five to two. Bingtown on top by three, two and a half minutes left in the first quarter. You know, so far, it's been a defensive battle and, and missed shots. You know, the turnover by Abington. Montron back to Williams. 
Williams to Lorenzo, Lorenzo to Montron. Across to Williams, now in for Jade Wint. Wint looking for Fernandez. Fernandez fouled. No, a call for the travel. Trap. So a turnover for in Alicia Fernandez. Yeah, Fernandez having a tough time in the paint with the ball. Uh, the Green Wave is really playing tight defense on her, really smothering her. Ooh, I heard a, wow, I heard a foul. She hit the shot. The three for Courtney McCabe, it is eight to two, Green Wave on top, and a turnover, and McCabe is in alone. McCabe fouled from behind by Lorenzo. Yeah, good foul by Lorenzo. Make her earn at the free throw line. Danielle Panico getting ready to come into the game for Abington. As McCabe hits her first attempt. One of two at the line, rebound tapped out to Lorenzo. And a timeout called by head coach Chris Connolly. Miles, the boxers coming in at three and two. Some big wins in those, in that column, a couple against Barnstable, and the big one, season opener against Marshfield, third ranked in the state. Yeah, well actually the Lady Boxers came out guns blazing won three in a row, then they got to the holiday tournament and kind of went on a little skid. But um, I definitely look, look to see them rebound and uh, stop playing some good basketball again. So the Boxers sitting at four and two. Four Forgot and about two. their win against Holyoke after the holiday tournament. Nice long two plus hour bus ride out to just northwest of UMass Amherst. Well, that's good that the Lady Boxers won out there, and, and so it makes it an easier ride home for, like you said, a two and a half hour bus ride. Williams to Montron. Fernandez almost traveled that. Ooh. And another takeaway. Yeah, that was a forced pass by uh, Fernandez. Makes it up here on a steal. Three for Lorenzo is good. You know, and I've seen her hit that all year. She can hit that shot, so hopefully she'll make a few more, get these boxes back in it. Coach, Coach Connolly is fired up. He called for the full court press and not one of the boxers stayed back to defend the inbounds pass. And he came out, he was almost at half court yelling, back. Back. Yeah. I think we they're a little excited. Yes, I think they're a little excited. That might have been the first outside shot that the boxers made in this game by uh, Lorenzo. Eleven to five, Abington on top. Forty-five seconds to go in the first quarter. Lorenzo, deep three is good. Yeah. And a steal for Elizabeth Williams. Lorenzo calling for it. Fernandez thought about the three drives inside, takes a two, and it's good. Wow. Rockton's charging. Eleven to ten, back from. Eight down at one point. Yep, Lady Box is starting to hit their outside shots. Shot yeah. clock is off, 10 seconds to go in the first quarter. A three is in and out. Offensive board, that's a travel. Yeah. And they called it better late than never. never. Yeah. But you could see it from everywhere in the gym. She took four and a half steps with that ball. Without a dribble, there's 1.9 on the clock. Last second, Hawk is gonna come up well short for Elizabeth Williams. The buzzer sounds, 
Miles, the late charge by the boxers puts him down by one at the end of the first eight. Yes, exactly, right, late charge, down. and uh, good that the boxers made that late charge to give them some momentum going into this second quarter of this uh, basketball game. Miles, there's a lot of snow coming. I mean, a lot, so much that Brockton's already canceled school for Thursday and Friday. The city has already sent out the trash schedule, already on a holiday schedule. Just for the viewers out there that might be wondering. Wednesday's trash would have been picked up Thursday, will now be picked up on Friday. So Wednesday's customers on Friday, Thursday on Saturday, no Friday pickup for those viewers in the area where trash is normally picked up on Friday. Take it easy, you will have to go another week before putting out two barrels. Almost a backcourt violation on the inbounds pass. Also, don't forget to put your windshield wipers up or they will freeze to your windshield. As Abington hits a layup, 13-10. 20 seconds into the second quarter, Lorenzo to Williams. Montron can't hold on to it. Yeah, that's the second one she's lost when one of, the, one of her teammates has passed it to her. And she's gonna come out and take a break and think about it a little bit. She needs to concentrate just a little bit more when she receives that pass. Pass. If you're wondering what that giant structure is on one end of the gym, swing it, swing it, swing it. there's a staircase on one side and a slide on the other. It's a strength and conditioning thing for the Brockton High athletes. Took a test run before this game. Did you? It's pretty fun. I mean, I was gassed after half the staircase, but it was pretty fun. <laughs> Good on her first attempt is Mo Stanton. I tell you, these, this Lady Green Wave, there's some pretty good free throw shooters on this team. They're taking advantage at the uh, free throw, at the charity stripe. Making their shots. Two of two is Stanton. Now 15 to 10, Abington on top. Lorenzo, three, no good. Went with the offensive board. She gives it over to Fernandez. Fernandez, spin around jumper, no good. Went comes down with it, strong to the basket, up off the glass and in. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. Nice, strong rebound by Jade Went, and she went up, back up strong for the two points. Good job by the Lady Boxer. Foul on, it's gonna be on Wentz. Wow, I thought it was more on uh, on uh, Lorenzo. She was the aggressive watch, defensive watch, 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 watch. person player there, but they called it on Jade Went. Could have gone either yeah. or. Yeah. yeah. Here's a three, no good from the get go for Abington. Williams comes up with a steal. Lorenzo in for Fernandez, down low to Wint. Good passing by the boxers, and Wint has another two. Yeah, that was beautiful passing. As you said, the ball did not touch the floor when it, by the time it got to uh, Jade Wint. Short shot, no good. Montero back in the game. She will replace the hot hand from beyond the arc, Annalie Lorenzo. Yeah, Lorenzo came in there, and um, all of a sudden, Brockton Lady Box is caught on fire. So she's going to get a well-deserved rest for getting these boxes back in this ball game. Fernandez Wint splits the D off the glass, no good. That was a nice move by Wint. She just couldn't quite finish it off. A little bit too hard off the backboard. 
Number 13 is good, that is Mo Stanton, who is having a good night here at Staff Gymnasium. Went three, no good. Jayla Smith grabbing the rebound. Yeah, nice rebound by the um, by, by Smith. Went out to Williams. Williams thinking about the deep three. Now over to Montero. Back to Williams. Williams in for Smith. Smith triple teamed in the paint. Her bat angle shot went is followed on the way up from the rebound. To be at the line for two. Yeah, Jade went excellent job boxing out there for the offensive boards. Put it right back up and got fouled over the, on the back. Last year, Jade Rent, raw talent. You could tell with a little grooming and good coaching, she could become a force. And this year, she's really becoming a force on this uh, Lady Boxers basketball team. 17 to 16, Abington on top as Brockton has clawed their way back into it. And there's a block for Jade Wentz. Ooh, nice defense. Now a three is out of play, hitting that rope support above the basket. Again, Wentz showing her defensive skills as, along with her offensive skills. Montero driving in, bad angle shot, no good. Went strong to the basket as she was falling over. And a foul on, I believe, in Alicia Fernandez. Oh, they're gonna call they're it on call Jade Went. Went again. That's Jade Went called for another foul. That puts Abington in a one and one bonus situation. So Miles is we've alluded to. A lot of snow coming the way. Have you gotten the milk and bread yet? Uh, yeah, I have. I got the milk, the bread, the funny bones. I'm all set. See, I say forget about the milk and bread. <laughs> to the packy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is good on a cold day. Quite like whiskey, Jayla Smith for three is no good. Went with the rebound to Ooh, Fernandez. nice pass. Smith coming down with the rebound. And Brockton will reset. Fernandez can't get up quite high enough. Yeah, it was a little bit too high for Fernandez to get to. But good ball movement. Good communication between the lady boxers and themselves. Trying to figure out to get it inside. Ooh. That angle shot off the glass and in. It is 21 to 16. Halfway through the second quarter. Fernandez spinning with Ooh, it, weird. foul. Yeah, definitely some body contact by, and I believe number 25. That was uh, Mahoney with the foul. Light week for Brockton Community Access, all things considered. There's this game, Abington and Brockton, and on Saturday, weather provided. Negative 35 degree wind chill on Saturday, folks. We will be at AZF Arena, where it will somehow miraculously still be colder in the rink than it is outside. Join us, please. Nice defensive play right there by the Lady Boxers to take it away. Montero, deep three, short. And a re 
rebound for the Green Wave. Now uncontested layup Ooh. is good for Courtney McCabe. Nice job by McCabe. She was underneath the basket when the pass got to her, and she nicely flipped it up there for the two points. Fernandez coming down with it, finding some space, laying it up, but hung on the rim. Abington coming away with the rebound. And a foul, this one should go against Montero. So Montero called for the hold. It is now eight team fouls against the boxers. Abington has also already canceled school tomorrow. It's one saying it's supposed to be a huge storm. We're supposed to get 16 inches of snow. We've seen a forecast like this where we only get a dusting. Well, I'm sure it'll be a little bit more than a dusting, and let's hope it's not 16 inches. Two fifteen to go in the second quarter, 24 to 17. Boy, number 35 there for Abington, uh, Christiana Remillard. Boy, she flew down the court with the basketball pretty fast, handling that basketball and um, coming down the court. Nice job. 25 to 17, your score, earning a second shot was Remillard. Yeah, Lady, uh, Lady Green Wave is slowly pulling away from the boxes. Lady boxes need to put in some baskets here. This one tipped, Abington comes up with a steal, now all the way up. Ooh, looks like a travel. Excellent hesitation there by number two, Lauren Kelleher. Well, she did a good job with her feet. Almost looks like she traveled, but referee was right down there. Timeout called by Coach Chris Connolly as his team now down by 10. Yeah, good timeout by Coach Connolly. Calm his team down. They've been making some ill-advised passing. A lot of uh, bad passing and force passing into the middle this evening, which has uh, cost him a number of turnovers. Well, the leading score is for Abington to this point, seven points for Remillard and Mo Stanton each. Six for McCabe and Matty O'Connell leading in rebounds with three to this point. Boxers, it is not even close, and this is going to be the deciding factor should the Boxers come back in this one. Jade Wint with six points and nine rebounds. Now Montron, two, no good. Follows a shot out of play off of the Boxers. Twenty-seven, seventeen. Abington on top. Montron clogging the passing lane. Abington will retain possession. Yeah, good aggressive move by Montron on defense right there. Ooh. Number thirty-five can really take it to the hole. Nice job. Remillard's 11th point on the night. Uh, 
went to Montron. Montron had, had an opening. open shot, yeah. Now Lorenzo will take it. It's Woo! good. Wow, she got a quick release. And it's very accurate. And it's not a rainbow shot. It's more of a line drive. Yeah. Annalie Lorenzo, her third three-pointer of the night. A bad angle layup for 42. 42. That is Jess Brundage. Yeah, nice job where she used the backboard up high. Lorenzo thinking about the three. Lorenzo way downtown, no good. 30 seconds to go. There is a five second difference between shot clock and game clock. Whoa. Good for Matty O'Connell. Nice job. Nice touch on the ball to put it in the basket. Lorenzo being double teamed and her, her pass just <laughs> not enough Sli mustard Yeah, on it, it slipped out of her hands sort of. She just get, didn't get a good grip when she passed it. Way up for McCabe is good. Brockton way downtown for three. You still have time to get closer. Abington will hold on, the buzzer sounds. And Brockton finds themselves in a 15 point hole at the end of the first half. Miles started off slow. Brockton clawed their way back in and then Abington pulled away. Brockton clawed back again. They were down at one, uh, down by one at two different points. And now they're down by 15. What does Brockton have to do to make the waves not so high? They have to start making shots. Oh, the only one really out there making shots is um, Lorenzo. Basically, um, they're going to have to do a better job passing. It's just that Abington, did give Abington credit. They're playing great defense, making it hard for the Lady Boxers to get the ball in the basket. So somehow the Lady Boxers have to do a better job um, putting that ball in the basket. Sometime a little bit too much passing, and they end up losing the ball. But too many turnovers that they got. They have to cut down on the turnovers. It is 35 to 20 at the end of the first half. We're going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you second half action as well as first half stats right after this. Your daughter is having trouble learning French. Do you a hire a tutor? Bonjour. B, enforce a French-only rule at home. Or C, watch some foreign films. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers. But that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. More will talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. At work or at play. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Oh, hey, she's cute. Nice going, man. Things are going great for you. You've earned a night out. Good drinks, good friends. Yeah, we can go ahead and call this a good night. 
Wait, is that your car? Uh oh. Not smart. Yeah, I saw that coming. Say goodbye to her. Ouch, that'll hurt your bank account. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. I hope you like eating frozen dinners. Alone. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. So, I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into Staff Gymnasium for second half action between the Abington Green Wave and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. Miles, it's 35 to 20, Abington up by 15. Some high notes for the Boxers. Jade went nine points. Uh, six points to go along with nine rebounds. And the leading scorer for the Green Wave, Christiana Remillard, number 35, having a spectacular night. Fernandez's offensive rebound it bounced to the Green Wave. They take it over. A three is good for number four. That is Marissa Golden, her first points on the night. Yeah, Lady Green Wave started where they left off in that first half, hitting those outside jumpers. It's just killing the boxes. They're going to have to really come down hard defensively and stop some of those um, outside shots. They can see that these uh, Lady Green Wave can hit those shots. Jill Smith. A three for Elizabeth Williams, no good. And a travel expertly called by the ref. Yeah, that was a good call by the referee. Good defense by uh, Fernandez. to 20 now the score. Brockton yet to score in the second half. Fernandez looking to change that, no good. A rebound to number two, Lauren Kelleher. Now down low for O'Connell, no good, foul. Oh, come on. That was like a good defensive play. Push, they're calling a push. I didn't see it, but I tell you, uh, number 50 for the Green Wave, she, Maddie O'Connell, she's doing a good job underneath, getting position, and uh, she's got some good moves. One of two at the charity stripe. 19 point edge now is Nilani Montero. Fernandez offensive rebound. She's fouled. Uh, call for a travel again. Again, good defense by the uh, Abington team. They just smothered on uh, Alicia. O'Connell down low, and she commits a travel. Yeah, that was good defense by. Um, Williams, Elizabeth Williams caused her to travel. Montero to Williams. Smith back across to Williams. Williams pump fakes for three. Loses it. 
out of play. Williams had an open shot right there. For some reason, she decided not to take the shot. Tried to work it into Went. That angle layup, no good offensive rebound for the Green Wave. McCabe to Golden, her three no good, out of play, Brockton ball. Brockton's gonna have to start scoring some points in a hurry. Five minutes left in this third quarter, but Abington definitely has the, um, the guns to keep scoring. And Brockton's just having a tough time trying to score baskets tonight as a whole. Turbo called by Coach Connolly of the Boxers, 39 to 20. The score, Brockton yet to score in the first three minutes of the second half. They are down by 19. And Miles Abington has started to pull away really in all phases of the game. You've seen them get some offensive rebounds that have been converted to points. Brockton looks kind of dead in the paint. What does Brockton have to do to turn this thing around? Well, they have to wake up and uh, really concentrate. And like you said, they look a little sluggish. Coming out here in the, in the second half, they really haven't scored any points here in the second half. And um, Abington has been able to slowly take their lead to a, another level. Like you said, 19 point lead at the moment. Let's see what Brockton can do. Elizabeth Williams, nine points tonight so far. Now Montero, three, good. Neilani Montero. And those are her first points tonight. Oh, that's like a travel. Ooh. Williams is going to be called for the block. And I think the Green Wave got away with a travel there early, early on on those series of shots. at the line, it is now 40 to 23. Abington on top by 17. Williams to Smith, Smith shot no good. Montero offensive rebound, fouled on her way up. And she'll be at the stripe for a couple of shots. Annalie Lorenzo and Jasuma Matron getting ready to come back into the game. Yeah, Montero doing a good job of going to the basket when the ball was shot, got good uh, position on the shot, got the rebound and put it right back up to get fouled. Lorenzo going to come in for Nilani Montero. Lorenzo's gonna get hot again here from beyond the arc. She, she has to. If um, Brockton wants to get back in this basketball game. Fernandez chasing this one out of play. Went committing a foul. She's in some serious foul trouble. Yeah, that was a good foul. I could hear the, the slap on the uh, wrist by Went. That is her fourth personal, so one more, and Jade Went is done for the night. She comes out for what should be a fairly quick breather. Yeah, she'll the be most back. Most effective boxer by far tonight. Wow, nice, nice shot there by number two, Kelleher. Fernandez thought about the three, now Williams takes it. And it's good off the glass. 
Yeah, Brockton's gonna have to do a full court press. Put some pressure on the um, ball. It's gonna be a push against Montron. Dude, that's a beautiful pass. Are they gonna call a hold? I, I saw a little forearm shiver get out of play. substitutions for the green wave. Williams over to Smith. Smith wide open three is short. Smith by far the shortest boxer on the court. Tough to get the arm strength, especially when you are sub 5-6. That was a nice move by Fernandez. He just couldn't quite finish it. Lorenzo fouled as Jamari Johnson is now in the game. Nice job by Johnson getting a position in there, going up strong to get the rebound and put it right back up and got fouled. She has to step in, went shoes, and that's what she needs to do is get rebounds. And um, if she's on the offensive end, put it right back up and get the, hopefully get the whistle or get the basket or get both. Okay, 44-28, a 16-point edge now for the Green Wave. And Johnson, perfect at the line. Yep. Johnson's a, uh, a senior. Remillard comes out in favor of Danielle Panico. Johnson and Lorenzo weren't moving as that ball came in bounds. It's almost as if they didn't know it was put into play. Lorenzo, quick release is good. Wow. Timeout called by Abington is Brockton now down by 12. Clawing their way back. Miles, Annalie Lorenzo, talk about the release. Yeah, quick release like you said, and she's she's been dead on today, tonight. I think she missed uh, maybe one or two early on, but ever since then, she's been hot. Has kept this boxer team in contention to um, possibly get back in this ball game. Only down, looks like, by about 12 points. Lorenzo now has four threes on the night. 12 points beyond the arc, leading the Brockton Boxers. How many points overall? 12. 3.01 left in the third quarter. Brockton down by 12, clawing their way back from as many as 19 down. Guest. Abington with it is Brockton seems to have new life in the defensive zone. Creating the turnover off of a pass that went out of play. Yeah, nice defense by the boxers, forcing the turnover. Now they need to come down here and uh, put some points on the board, make it very interesting. Lorenzo to Jayla Smith, back to Lorenzo. They know Lorenzo is hot, so they're trying to get her the ball. She takes She's a three from way down. <laughs> Oh, that one came from West Junior High School. Wow, nice shot. She's feeling it tonight. 
15 now for Lorenzo as the boxers have cut it to a single digit lead. It is 44 to 35. Now a three for Abington, no good. O'Connell fighting for the rebound. Now Williams on the floor. It'll be a jump ball, and Abington will retain possession. Now a three way off the mark. Uncontested retrieval of the shot for and Alicia Fernandez off the glass and in. That was a nice job by Fernandez to get the offensive rebound and somehow get it back up and in. Brockton putting pressure on the ball. A foul. I believe this is going to go against Fernandez. Nice job by Mo Staten to drive to the basket with no fear. Got off a shot and was fouled. It is the fourth personal for Elizabeth Williams. So you got uh, two starters in trouble in foul trouble, Williams and uh, Went, both sit, sitting on the bench with uh, 131 left in this third quarter. Box is going to have to get some production out of their bench. Ooh, nice block by Fernandez. Rejected. Good defense by the. Uh, by uh, Abington High. Yeah, this is Mo Stanton having a phenomenal night for the Green Wave all the way in there, pass for O'Connell. O'Connell wasn't expecting it. It's gonna go out of play off of Brockton. Yeah, Mo, yeah, that was off Brockton. Mo Stanton, wow, she can really bring that ball up court quickly. Brockton's gonna have to really pay attention when she's handling the basketball. In for O'Connell. And fouled was Kelleher. Montero called for the hit. Yeah, Abington girls really playing good team offense. Passing the ball quickly, good passing. Looking for their open man. No good on her first attempt was Kelleher. Now, Annalie Lorenzo, the sharpshooter to Fernandez. Fernandez spin around shot, no good. Wow, she's got that spin around shot perfected. We are now joined by Jerice the Assassin Harris. Talk about sharpshooters from beyond the arc. We've seen quite the game from Annalie Lorenzo, who now has five three pointers. Jerice. You guys are having quite the start to the season on the boys' side. Talk about the season and why you guys are so unstoppable this year. Um, like like Bowen said, this year we have a new team. And also we've been working hard on, and during the off season. And you know, just been. This so is 40 seconds left in the third quarter, Brockton started this third quarter 19 down they have since clawed their way back into it we saw a game similar to this in the first ever matchup of Spellman versus Brockton High compare that game to this one and what you and Annalie Lorenzo have in common from beyond the arc oh and Leah she's a wonderful shooter she, yeah and then uh, but what was the <laughs> Compare the Spellman Brockton game where Spellman clawed their way back from 15 down to the way Brockton is clawing their way back in tonight. Oh, yeah, they, they're using her a lot. They need those threes. This was the third quarter? Yeah, they need them a lot. Fourth quarter. 
So that game turned into an instant classic. Abu Kaba with 23 points, 16 rebounds in that game against Cardinal Spellman. When you've got so much height in the paint, it really opens up the outside because they have to double and triple team the guys down low like Eldon Terry, Tejan Glendarity. Talk about how that helps you really as a finesse three-point shooter. Oh, yeah, it helps us a lot. Eldon, Eldon's new on the team, so he, he, bring, he brings a huge role on the team. And also Abu, Abu does a good job. This is his second year on varsity, so he has a little experience. And they know what they're doing on the court, so it helps us just helps get good shots. Now let me ask you, who's Boo? Which Abu? Number 15. Abu Kaba. Abu Kaba. Oh, Abu Kaba, okay. All right. Having a phenomenal season for the Brockton Boxers as there's eight seconds left. Brockton will take over now, down by eight points, slowly but surely clawing their way back in against the Abington Green Wave. So you guys have had quite the different season from last year. Last year is Fernandez, deep shot, almost finding its way in. Buzzer sounds 46-38 to score at the end of the third quarter. You guys are having quite the start to the year, capped off by a championship in the Oliver Ames Holiday Tournament. Compare this season to last year where you had a couple of blowouts early. BC High came in here and really just dominated. You guys went to Morrissey Boulevard, got a two-point victory over the Eagles. Talk about the start to the year for you guys and what's different from last year. What's different from last year is that our team is way better now. Like, like we got more experience now, especially coming from new players. They help us a lot. And this um, last year, like we didn't have that much experience. We had about three seniors, so. Yeah, we have to work. We have to work with them. And uh, yeah. So basketball, a family affair for the Harrises. We have seen your mother at every single game we've been to. Talk about why it's important and what it does for you to have your family cheering for you every night. Oh, I, I love it. I appreciate it. I love my mom and dad. And I love her for coming to all my games. She also told us not to tell you yeah. your nickname of the assassin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but when you have four quick threes from beyond the arc in what I consider the biggest game of the year and easily the most hyped against Cardinal Spellman, you're a sharpshooter. My mom was a sharpshooter in high school too. She she has a um she has a three-point record at Massachusetts for most threes in the game. Really? What, what's your mom's name? Tina Anderson. Oh, that's your mom's? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Heard all about her. Excellent uh, basketball player. Thank now, you. if Now, who, who can go, if y'all play one-on-one, who'd win? Me. <laughs> <laughs> you know she's going to watch this and hear you. <laughs> would you. Would you let her get at least a lead going into, like, the fourth quarter and then just come back? I'll let her score a couple points, but then couple I'm going to I'm gonna have to show her, gonna show her how, <laughs> how it's like to guard me. Abington back to a 10-point edge, 48-38, seven and a half to go in the fourth quarter. And it's Remillard comes up with the loose ball. Lorenzo taking it right back. Annalie Lorenzo with 15 points so far. Brockton is in quite a bit of foul trouble. Elizabeth Williams. And Jade Went, as well as Nailani Montero, each with four fouls against them. Eight team fouls against the boxers so far in the half. So easy to say you got your three-point shooting ability from your mom. Talk about the work you put in from beyond the arc and how you get so good. I mean, tonight, Annalie Lorenzo, five three-pointers. I don't think I've seen a release as quick as hers. Yeah. 
I've been working with NBA NBA player Dana Barrows, former NBA player, and he and he's been helping me a lot getting my shot. And also, I've been training, I've been training during the off season, going into the wild, working out. Now, during the off season, what, did you play with any of your teammates during this past summer? Yeah, we played in the Boise Gus Cup League. So, so a lot of you guys are familiar with each other, just oh. from not so much as last year, but also working together in the off season. Well, this year we communicate more on the floor. Last year we barely communicated on the floor. And I, and I think this year we have more chemistry. So speaking of former NBA or Dana Barros, take it you, you watch the pros every once in a while. Isaiah Thomas. First, let's rewind to the trade. What do you think about that trade? I mean, I think, I think it was kind of messed up. But I mean, at least, I mean, they're still going to get their ring, like he said. But I just, I just think it's kind of messed up. Because what he did for the city, what he did for the city of Boston, I think it's kind of messed up what Danny Age did. So now from a business standpoint, do you think the Celtics gave up too much? Um, a first rounder, a second rounder, Isaiah Thomas, Jay Jake Crowder, Crowder, just for Kyrie. Uh, and I like what Ky Kyrie's done as much as the next guy, but that yeah. was a that was a haul for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Wait, isn't the Celtics first in in the um, Eastern Conference? So we faced them in the Eastern Conference as Jade went back in the game. Her three, no good, out of play, off of Lorenzo. So we faced them. Uh, they beat us four to one. Hopefully, the last time they beat us. Isaiah Thomas injured his hip, I believe, in game two, and that ended his postseason. Originally projected to be out until, quote, at least February. He made his debut last night. Not playing tonight as Cleveland comes to Boston. Let's talk about that. Should they have delayed his season debut to tonight at the Garden? Yeah, I, th I think they should have. They should have been, they should, they should have, I think they should have. So when I was a kid, back in the good old days, 2008 title, I was 15 years old. The biggest rivalry of the day, Lakers, Celtics. Do you consider Cleveland a bigger rivalry with the Celtics than the Los Angeles Lakers? Absolutely. I mean, if... Their first, their first in the, in the Eastern Conference. I think the Lakers are terrible this year. I mean, so, <laughs> could you give any shooting tips to Lonzo Ball? <laughs> he could. Yeah, I could. I could. He could. I could. No, it, it, it's interesting. You asked him about the uh, Lakers Celtics rivalry. Who, wh which was more important to him, Celtics Lakers, Celtics uh, Cavaliers, and how old are you? Six, I mean, 17. 17, yes. See, he, he doesn't know the history. I missed the good of, old days back yeah, in the 70s and 80s. The 80s. Celtics-Lakers was an event. I mean, every, everything stopped for the Celtics-Lakers games, especially during the Bird Magic era, during the uh, late 70s and all during the 80s. But um, it's just very interesting, your, your, your answer to that. Lorenzo, three Ooh. off the mark. Out of play is Brockton back down by 15, 53 to 38, five and a half to go in the fourth quarter. So I don't know if you were here for the end of the JV game. Always. Double overtime, let me use the word classic. Now, now where's you guys next game? When is it? Uh, New Bedford next Tuesday. In New Bedford? Next Tuesday. That's your first big three um, test? Mm-hmm. You know anything about the New Bedford Whalers this year? Uh, I heard that they they man they man press uh -huh. from the start to the end. Okay. And that was uh, that was all I got info. Now so, have, have you excuse me, Matt? Have you guys run into uh, any team yet playing uh, a, a full court press? No, we Not haven't yet. yet. 
Have it's you my, been, been practicing? practicing? Yeah. Oh, good, good. Practicing every day. Good, good. So, as a player, do you have certain dates, especially from last year to this year, circled on your calendar that you want revenge on certain teams? Brighton. Brighton. Cambridge. I was going to ask, 99 to 49 final score here at Staff Gymnasium last year. A blowout for the Division II state champs over the Brockton Boxers. So, Brighton, who else? Cambridge. Cambridge, Ridge, and Latin. That is going to be a phenomenal mm. matchup. We are very excited for it. Cambridge making a deep run in the tournament last year. As Fernandez comes up with a steal. Williams back into the game as Williams throws it into the arms of Lauren Kelleher. Halfway through the fourth quarter, 13 point edge for the green wave. This one out of play off of Abington. So you got Cambridge, Ringe, and Latin. You've got Brighton. Anyone else? Uh, Catholic Memorial. Catholic Memorial. So the Catholic Conference, I don't want to be mean, but they dominated the public schools in general, but especially Brockton last year. BC High with two blowouts in a couple of weeks, including the championship game of the Rotary Holiday Tournament in its final year. What is it, how does it feel to go into BC High when they're supposed to be one of the best teams in the state year after year? That was a great win, win for us. That was a good, great win for us. We needed that. Holding on a 55 to 53 victory over the Eagles. So what does it feel like to go in there, get the big victory, when everyone was expecting it could have been a blowout. BC High has the recruiting power. They've got the millions of dollars worth of workout facilities and donors and this, that, and the other thing to offer potential players. What's it like is some rinky-dink public school to go in there and get the best of the Eagles? It's a great, it's a great. Also, um, we've been, we, they do like a press, like one, three, like 13. So we, we practice that every day. So Coach Bowen has been around this program for what, 30 years now? 30 years. I don't know about 30 he years. Had he had, no, I because believe 24 is the JV coach. No, he, Bowen's probably been around 16, 17 years, because when I started broadcasting, um, was his, Coach Ortiz was still coaching. I've been here 20 years, 21 and years. And at that point, Coach Bowen was JV. Yes. He coached my mom and uncle. So who's your uncle? No, Coach Bowen coached my uncle and, uh, and, uh, and my mom. Who's your uncle? George Anderson. What's his name? George Anderson. So if you were to put up the all-time three record at your college, would that give you bragging rights over your mom, or would it be equal? I think it would be equal. <laughs> so if we were if we were to have a three-point shootout right now, no defenders, no blocking or anything, straight NBA all-star three-point contest, who's winning? <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> it's all right. You're only going to be stuck in your house with your mom for the next four <laughs> days. You don't have school Thursday or Friday already announced. Uh, oh, that's, nice long that's vacation. Good. So when's your next game? Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday in New Bedford. Jade went now with the double-double, 10 points, 10 rebounds. As the boxers trying to come back from 11 down now with two and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Jerry's, it's been a back and forth, gritty kind of matchup here. Talk about this game and what you've seen from it from the Lady Boxers. It gives you encouragement for the Lady Boxers to have a good season. Uh, didn't even, well, and Alicia has been doing good during the season. Getting, getting good wins for them. This game, I've been seeing, well, they need, they need more offensive boards, they need to box out more. 
and just take just make good passes and good shots. So at some point this season, we're gonna set up that three-point contest. Cause it's, I did not know your mom had the all-time three points in the game record at Massasoit. So it'll be interesting. If we put something good on the line, would you consider letting her win? Um, nah. <laughs> not a chance. <laughs> Now, see, that, that's a, a good sign of a, a, a good competitor. Good Even, competitor. He's not going to give his moms a break. He's out to win. Just now, win, baby. Would she, try to, would she try to pull the guilt card? Like, oh, I'm your poor old mom. Like, <laughs> I raised you. I gave you this, that. And I, I gave you what you need to succeed in basketball. You should let me win. Would she do that? Or would she, would she be one of the gritty elbow throwers? Uh, <laughs> or somewhere in between? She probably would try to... <laughs> Probably trying to convince me to let her win. And if she got you to feel bad, would you consider letting her win? Or do mm. feel, once you step between the lines, do feelings disappear? Uh, no, I don't think so. You know, I, I got a funny feeling. His mom's a real competitor right, from what I remember. And she's going to go out there and put everything. She, he's, he's got his hands full. He's got his hands full. If he goes on the court with his mom, he got his hands full. She can play. So where did your basketball career start? Was it in the driveway with mom, or was it, it was them during, signing you up was for a uh, youth um, league? The YMCA leagues, the little leagues. I'm sure it helps your shooting ability to have your mom the three-point record holder at Massasoit, helping your shot in teaching fundamentals of the game. Elizabeth Williams to Jade Wint, pump fake go back over to Williams. A minute 30 to go. It is a eight point lead for the Green Wave with 1.30 to go. Jerice, we want to thank you for joining us. You've had a spectacular start to the season. You as well as all of the Brockton boxers. Eight and oh now? Seven and Seven and Seven and Wint for three is good. That's a second three in the last two or three minutes. Jade Wint now with the double-double as this one is going to go. There's a discussion of officials as to yeah, who I, the foul's on. I, I think the coach for Brock and High was saying that uh, Abington's coach was calling a timeout before that foul happened. And it actually it did, but I don't think the referees heard the coach yelling timeout. That's why the referee is explaining to uh, Coach Connolly. Coach Connolly's going right back at him with yeah. that's terrible. I was screaming yeah. timeout, timeout, timeout. Yeah, I don't blame him. Uh, it was a tough break there. <laughs> then Coach Connolly saying, you're about 10 feet away, and I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, timeout, timeout, timeout. Lorenzo called for the push, and it is number 13 most Stanton at the line. Stanton has had a phenomenal game. Yes, she has. You could tell she's a real steady, tough competitor out there on the basketball court and can fly down the court with the basketball. Stanton 0 for 2 at the line. Fernandez fighting for the rebound. So if you're just joining us, we've been speaking with Jerice the Assassin Harris. The sharpshooter of the Brockton Boxers is time now of the essence for the Brockton Boxers. Jade went to Nelani Montero. Good luck, good luck, bro. Thank you for joining us, Jerice. Good luck the rest of the way. As Brockton has to get a shot off soon. Williams nowhere to go with it. Finds Fernandez down low out of play off of Abington. 50.7 left. Brockton taking a lot of time off the clock, trying to get that shot off, but, but because of uh, Abington's great defense. Air ball by uh, Went, and then a foul. That possibly could be her fifth. Block called. And it is, that's her fifth. 
unfortunately. It's Jade Wint. Jayla Smith's gonna come in for Wint. Wint has followed out of this game with 44 seconds left. I tell you, she played a really tough, good game all around, good defense, great um, rebounding on both ends of the court, great outside shooting. She just did a good, and inside shooting. She just played a good game. Unfortunately, she got in some foul trouble early, had to come out there, and it, and, and uh, hurt hurt the boxes a little bit, but um, nice job by Jade Wint. Jade Wint, 10 points, uh, 16 points, 10 rebounds, a double-double for the Brockton Boxer center. Yeah, 16 points from the center, and she leaves with a minute left. That's going to hurt. Lorenzo, three, no good. And Alicia Fernandez, the rebound, strong to the basket, draws the foul. 33.9 left, Brockton down by seven. That is Mercer Golden called for the push. Yeah, that's just yeoman work underneath by Alicia Fernandez not giving up, putting 110% there, rewarded with a free throw. Good on her first attempt, six point edge, that's a two possession game. Easy if you're Annalie Lorenzo. Yeah. There's Fernandez, 202, timeout immediately called by the coach of the Abington Green Wave. 33.9 seconds left. Miles, this one certainly has been scrappy as Brockton tries to come back from 19 down to start the second half. They are now within five. Yeah, the, only, the, the clock's against them right now. That's the only problem. 33 seconds left. The next problem is the Abington Lady Green Wave, they're all good free throw shooters for the most part. So if uh, Brockton fouls, you know, it's from what I've seen this this uh, basketball game, um, Abington High's uh, basketball team, they're all good free throw shooters um, at the free throw line. I want to take this opportunity to thank the cast and crew for tonight's festivities. On camera up top, we have the prolific cinematographer, Aaron Tebow. We have Katya Andrade, Danny Steele, the official statistician for BCA Sports tonight. Mike, the postman Simmons, yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. A three, no good. Uh, Abington put up that three. Yeah, that was. Abington just put up a three on Brockton's end. And that was number two, Kelleher, and she realized it. She's embarrassed. Yep. And, and the coach <laughs> saying, we got away with it. So that was Christiana Remillard. What really would have been interesting if she would have hit that if shot. It, if it went in, it would have been Brockton a, would have been down by two. Exactly. So a uh, big boo-boo there. Sports center, not top ten. Remillard putting up a three for the wrong team. It did not fall. Yeah, and fortunately for Abington, the, the lady Green Wave can laugh about it, kind of giggle about it, especially um, Kelleher at the free throw line getting ready to shoot. And Alicia Fernandez call for an over the back. On the attempted rebound of Remillard's shot. <laughs> Coach saying that's the best miss of her life. And he's right. Well, that would have made it very interesting should Remillard have hit that shot. Kelleher, a good free throw shooter. She's a lefty. Interesting free throw um, shot that she has at the um, free throw line. Lorenzo gonna take a quick three. Williams now. Yeah. Gotta shoot. Abington. Download to Montero. Her three is good. Abington with tough defense, just 59 tough defense. 59 to 55, a four point ball game. Brockton committing a foul, double bonus. Situation for the Green Wave. Hit called against Lorenzo. If there's someone you don't want to see foul out, it is Annalie Lorenzo. That is her third personal foul. 
as Abington sending everybody back on defense save for the free throw shooter, Mo Stanton. And Stanton, the wrong person to foul, and that is her 10th point. Excellent free throw shooter for the Green Wave. Two a two, and that'll pretty much wrap it up. 61 to 55, your score. Williams to Montero. Montero driving inside. Her layup no good. Five seconds to go. Brockton still with it. And the jump ball is called with .8 seconds to go. Buzzer sounds. This one has come to an end. Miles 61 to 55. Your final score. The Green Wave over the boxers. It was a scrappy, encouraging win for the Brockton boxers, but certainly things that they have to look forward to work on in the week of practice ahead. Yeah, definitely so. But I tell you that uh, that Abington team, good team, good, well coached. Um, a lot of them players can hit the outside shot, and Mo Stanton is a real leader for that team. She's very dangerous when she has the ball on the fast break, and there wasn't a lot Brockton can do with the uh, Abington team this evening. They, they just missed too many shots and threw and threw away the ball. Too many turnovers, too way too many turnovers to go against this tough um, Abington team. Your leading scorers for the Abington Green Wave, 16 points for Christiana Remillard, 13 for Kelleher, 10 for McCabe for the Boxers, 16 for Jade Wint, 15 for Annalie Lorenzo, all of them coming from beyond the arc, and 10 for Annalicia Fernandez. Miles, a scrappy one here tonight. Yeah, very scrappy right from the beginning. Not a lot of points scored early on, but Abington's defense was just a little bit too tough for the Lady Boxers this evening. They had, they had to really work for their shots. Stay tuned, we're gonna get head coach Chris Connolly's thoughts on the seven po uh, six point loss here tonight. Here with head coach Chris Connolly. Coach, a six point loss to the Abington Green Wave. A couple of phenomenal comeback efforts within the course of this game. Getting within a couple of points at the very end. Tell us about the scrappy effort by your team. Um, yeah, we were gonna put the press on the first half and I think it would have maybe got us back in the game the first half there, but um, foul troubles. We, we, we picked up 10, 10 quick ones and the rest of the game we're trying to cover that because they would have been at the line the whole way. Um, you know, we played hard the second half. We really, after about three minutes in, we really picked it up. We fouled way too much. Um, they made just about every one of their free throws, I think. I only remember them missing two. Um, and I thought we had them all the way to the end, uh, especially when that girl tried to shoot a three for us. So Annalie Lorenzo, 15 points, all from beyond the arc. Talk about her shooting prowess tonight. Yeah, when she's hot, she, when she's on, she's on, and she can she can make them. So um, today she was on, she got her time, and she made the most of it. Jade Wynn eventually followed out of this game before she did 16 points, 10 rebounds, a double-double for your center. Talk about her effort tonight. Yeah, Jade was, Jade was great tonight. Um, she thinks a little too much sometimes out there, and then when she just plays, she does a lot better for us. Um, great kid, the 4.0 student, junior. Um, she's got a really bright future the rest of the season and next season. Um, it was, you know, I wish, I wish the outcome was better, but I uh, can't question the effort in the second half. Tell us about your next matchup. Well, we get into our league games next week. So next Tuesday, we're in New Bedford. Um, they started out rough. They are huge. They have great guards. Um, their last few games, they've been crushing teams. They lost to Taunton the first time they played them by a point. Second time yesterday, they beat them by 20 plus. So um, they're, they're peaking, and we're looking forward to getting into the league games right now. What are you working on in the week of practice looking forward to those league games? Well, we got to handle um, New Bedford's press. We got to handle their different zones. We got to handle their size inside. Um, we have to work on that defense a little bit. We have to improve that. We have to um, improve some conditioning, obviously, and uh, keep going with the rebounding. 
You know, we got better in the second half with the rebounding, but I think the first half they out-rebounded us a lot, and that was the big difference. Coach, congratulations on a scrappy effort here tonight. We'll see you in the league games. Thank you very much. Thank you. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, all of our camera people, our statistician Mike the Postman Simmons, my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Enjoy the snow, stay warm, and we'll see you next game.